This is The Green Room. I'm Caitlin Matson. I'm joined in The Green Room this afternoon by Christina Castaldi and Mark Laycock. They are professors of music at Wichita State University, both of them involved in the very first Wichita State University Symphony Orchestra concert of the school year. Hello to both of you. Hello. Good morning. So glad that you're here and excited for all of you as you begin your performances. You've already been in school a few weeks, but of course it takes some time to get ready for your very first performance. We're excited. It's, it's a great way to kind of kick off the school year, give us a, a goal, an immediate goal to strive for, and uh, students have been working hard. So we, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of new students this semester, which is great, and I'm sure... Um, for Mark Laycock, it feels like probably driving a bus, but <laughs> trying to get everybody corralled in time. But um, I'm really looking forward to this. Dr. Laycock, Mark, please tell us what is on your very first concert, which is uh, September the 19th. Well, we uh, are bookending the concert with instrumental pieces, and then I'll uh, and let Dr. Castaldi talk about our vocal selections. Uh, we're opening with a piece called The Block by uh, contemporary composer Carlos Simon. Uh, it's based on a series of paintings, a particular neighborhood in Harlem. Um, it's, it's energetic, exciting, just kind of a quick um, fanfare, if you will, a quick uh, opener. And then the second half, we, we uh, conclude with just a masterwork, uh, Beethoven's Third Symphony, his Eroica Symphony. So students and I are just enjoying diving into that uh, substantial and, and very important piece of music. And then we welcome Dr. Castaldi at the end of the first half uh, with some vocal selections. And what will you be performing? Yes, I will be singing Ain't It a Pretty Night from Carlisle Floyd's Susanna. Mm. And then we will also be performing Samuel Barber's Knoxville Summer of 1915. Um, so we, we're, we're featuring Tennessee <laughs> for <laughs> both of those uh, selections. Tell and us a little bit about Knoxville, about the poignancy oh, of it. Yeah, Knoxville is uh, such a beautiful work. It's about 15 minutes long. Um, it was based on James Agee's prose to begin with. And, and then it turned that prose turned into a preamble to his book entitled A Death in the Family. And the, the work, the book itself is through the eyes of a boy who lost his father in a car accident. And this is what happened to James Agee as well. He, he lost his father when he was very young. And Samuel Barber and James Agee knew each other. And at the time of composition for this Knoxville work, um, Barber's father was in in very poor health, and actually, it was it was dedicated to him. Um, the work itself is not sad; it's not morbid and creepy. <laughs> um, it is it is the the depiction of a of a childhood of of just lying in the grass with family, aunts and uncles, mother and father, and how meaningful that is. And, but there's just this one moment where the text just says, here we are all together, but let's bless them in their time of when it, when it becomes their time. So even from a, a child's perspective, the child knows that it's a uh, nothing's permanent, right? There's that worry that that isn't going to last forever. Um, it's particularly personal for me because I lost my father. It'll be 10 years now. So there are just these, this, uh, this text that really pulls at the strings. And when you're thinking about that, don't break the fourth wall when you're, <laughs> it's like you write, you feel the, the tears right at the back of your eyes. Like, nope, I'm just going to stop right there. <laughs> but Do you have uh, something it, you envision when you're, when you find yourself overly emotional on stage do you have something that you focus on uh I really just try and stay in the character um without it making it about myself I really do try and make it for let the audience feel what is needed to be feel 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 what field rather than myself because if I go there all bets are off because <laughs> I mean, I do know how to sing and cry at the same time, but it's not pretty. <laughs> but you'd rather not. <laughs> I would rather not. Yeah. Mark, what particular challenges does the orchestra 
face accompanying a voice? Oh boy. Um, well, understanding the text, how the text and the music um, interact. Um, the students have have the prose, but but uh, in fact, today this afternoon we'll actually hear it together for the first time. So they'll um, they've listened to the work, but to um, to prepare it and to to support the artistry of Dr. Castaldi, it, it just rises everything to a, a whole nother level. So we're very excited with that. I think all of the preparation starting today, all the preparation kind of has just additional meaning and, and uh, impact when, uh, when the voice is there. We're going to come back in just a couple moments and talk much more um, with Christina and Mark about this very first concert that the Wichita Symphony Orchestra, Wichita State University Symphony Orchestra is performing um, on the 19th, September 19th, 7 o'clock in Miller Concert Hall. We'll come back and talk more about what to expect. This is The Green Room. We are talking with Christina Castaldi and Mark Laycock, both on staff at Wichita State University. Uh, Christina is a wonderful vocalist. She, uh, you teach studio voice. Do you teach other classes? I do. Uh, I teach voice literature, which happens every other year. It's a humongous class that I cram in a semester. Um, we we run the gamut from German, French, American, British, Italian, Czech, Russian, Scandinavian. They're, they're just, just a whirlwind. But I love it. I love discovering repertoire all the time. And I also created two classes, Essential Somatics for Singers and another class for Instrumentalists, although they can take either class, it's it's the same. And it is based on the teachings of Thomas Hanna and Moishe Feldenkrais. And it is a whole semester of body work that is just so key for any human, but in particular for those who use their bodies for their for their instruments and just trying to deal with chronic tension that creeps in unbeknownst to them. So. And Dr. Mark Laycock leads the Wichita State University Symphony Orchestra. Uh, and also, uh, what classes do you teach? You conducting? I, I wonder every every week they, they ask me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you now do? That's a good question, Caitlin. Yeah. What, do you, what do I do? Um, so conducting is is probably yeah my big focus. Uh, our our introductory class in this in the fall, our more advanced class in the spring, and then private conducting students, and uh, just get out in the schools and recruit. Try to get some some new students um, on tap for the fall. Wichita State University presents uh, the Wichita State University Symphony Orchestra with guest artist Dr. Christina Castaldi, September the 19th. It begins at 7.30 in Miller Concert Hall. You can get tickets at the door, but you could also get them in advance. Whenever there's a guest artist, I feel like there might be a bit of a rush to get tickets because everybody's so excited to see, to see somebody special perform. Never hurts. Yeah, there tends to be a line at the uh, at the box office right before performance. So never hurts to um, wichita.edu slash fine arts box office. Wichita.edu slash fine arts box office for information tickets. I also know if you just do a quick Google search, Wichita State University School of Music events, it's pretty easy. It pops right up. You can see everything that's going on with the School of Music, which is a lot. It seems like there's something between a student recital, a faculty recital, a guest artist, um, Wednesdays and Wiedemann, or, you know, the Oregon series. It is, it is endless. Does it feel endless to you? There's something almost every day to support. We're, we're, tr we try very hard to attend all the performances, but I, I do have to say by the, by the end of the semester, you're like, oh my gosh, where am I supposed to sleep tonight? <laughs> because <laughs> like, I have to get up and, and do it all over again, but it's great. I love listening to everybody perform. Yes. I'm and... oh, sorry. We've started a new uh, a weekly convocation on campus. It's every Friday. And uh, one of the, the, the neatest aspects of this is uh, student performances, faculty performances, um, so we've recently featured vocalists and um, uh, chamber ensembles, brass. Uh, I think strings are coming up this week. It's it's just a reminder, just a weekly reminder of the incredible talent, the incredible teaching that's happening at Wichita State. Uh, it's just a vibrant place to 
to live and work. Yes, it is. And the pipeline from Wichita State University School of Music student to successful um, educator performer is a very real thing. It is a very real thing. A lot of our, our vocalists end up in young artist programs. I have a student who went on to Indiana University for for graduate work. Um, one is at Michigan State. I mean, people are out there doing what they train to do and our music education students get jobs immediately. I was talking with my hands at that point as I want to do, but they I mean, placement rates are very high. And so when, when parents say, oh, there's no career in music, you should not pursue music. That is a total lie. You can make a living. <laughs> Wonderful. And definitely on the string side, I know there are, we get emails through the summer uh, from school districts uh, around the region saying, we still have openings. Do you have any recent graduates? And by them, we say, nope, they've, they have jobs. Um, but certainly uh, on the music ed side, there are unfilled positions that are looking for qualified students. Wichita State University School of Music. Um, we have uh, Dr. Christina Castaldi, Dr. Mark Laycock here in the green room. Uh, Dr. Laycock is conducting the Wichita State University Symphony Orchestra, guest starring Dr. Castaldi next September the 19th. It begins at 7.30 in Miller Concert Hall. Have a wonderful first concert of the school year, Dr. Laycock, and uh, brava in advance. Christina, well, I, I know you'll be beautiful. Um, uh, Mark, tell us one more time everything that's on the concert. We start with uh, Carlos Simon's The Block. Uh, Dr. Castaldi singing Ain't It a Pretty Night from Susanna and Samuel Barber's Knoxville, summer of 1915. Second half is uh, Beethoven's Third Symphony, the Eroica. One other um, kind of novelty about this concert, I haven't mentioned uh, the chamber orchestra from Blue Valley Northwest High School is joining us for three movements of the Beethoven. So if you need any more spect uh, spectacle, uh, any more reason to attend the uh, these talented high school students are going to uh, blow you away with with their polish and musicianship. Thank you both so much for joining me today. And again, for those listening, September 19th at 730 in Miller Concert Hall, the Wichita State University Symphony Orchestra and performing with them on this concert is Professor of Voice Dr. Christina Castaldi. Have a great performance. Thank you for being here.